right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Today, our topic is very simple and need some listening. You know, always we hear, uh, even in our uh, churches, uh, that Muhammad is descendant from Ishmael. And many naive who claim to be ministers in churches keep saying that those are descendant from Ishmael. The reason for this ignorance, there was a book written a long time ago, and that book claimed that the Arab are descendant from Ishmael. This is not biblical, it's not from the Bible. This is from one person who created this lie, and then, you know, the rest are just copy and paste. Copy and paste uh, tradition is very well known. And sadly, we as a Christians, we are, you know, the same as the Muslims, we copy paste too. This is not only the Muslims they do, even Christians they do. I'm wondering how many of us, when a priest he say that the Arab are descendant from Ishmael, how many of us ask him, where do you get this from? What is exactly the reference for this? Is that a biblical thing? Uh, this is all goes to the 10th century when one person, he wrote a book, and then the rest just carry on. However, the word Arab it is not even a name of a nation. This is how ignorant and foolish a human being is. You see, I am an Arab, but doesn't mean that the Arab are an ethnic. When we say Arab, we mean people who live in the desert. The word Arab is coming from the Aramaic language. Aram is a person who live in hills, in the top of mountains. So the Aramaic are people of mountains. The Arab are people of the desert. You see, in the old days, the names have a reason. And today, it should not be a different. I mean, we give names to identify object or even a person. So when we say someone is an American, well, American, whoever carries citizenship of America, but doesn't mean that American is really an American, which means he is really from America. As an example, me, myself, I'm not born in America. I am an immigrant, but yet I have an American passport. So who live in America, they call him American. If he is a citizen, he have the rights of a citizen. He is a permanent living person for whatever years. They call him American, but in fact, not everyone who live in America is an American. Same time, uh, if America is a name of a land, and those who live in it are given the name from it, so how come we don't look at what happened to Arabia? Arabia is a desert. This is Arabia, the desert. So the Aramaic, there are people who being given the name of from Aram, their grandfather supposedly. And Aram is a person who live in a highland, so he is a person who is a highland living person. Uh, let us say the name sweet where he live. The, lane, the name fit with where he live. Whoever live in the desert, they call him Arab. It doesn't matter who is he. It doesn't matter even what language he speak. And then we go to what is called Arabic. Arabic is not a language by itself. Arabic is born of many languages. This is why if we go and open the Quran right now, we will see Muhammad, he have no choice except using hundreds of words which have nothing to do with the local language, which is, let us say, if we can say this is language, then we have to use, uh, we, have to, we have to come with an idea where this language is independent. But you will see that the Arab, 
or we, what we call Arabic language is a collection of uh, Ethiopian words, Aramaic words, Hebrew words, and Persian words, etc. So this language was, let us say, uh, many languages. And those many languages, they merged together, and then they made a new language. But the fact it is not really new. It just using the old and you know as everywhere the local they have their own dialect if you notice when Muhammad he was speaking about uh, Allah sending him the Quran and Muhammad in order to cover himself because he keep forgetting the Quran and he make the Quran or a new Quran which he cannot recite the old verse twice correctly so he come with this new lie saying that Allah he sent him the Quran in seven letters seven seven letters if you ask a Muslim or Muhammad and he will say to you uh, the seven letters are seven dialect seven dialect and you will notice here that Muhammad he used the number seven and there is no way the Arab they have seven dialect which mean I mean the Arab in the desert they have thousands of dialect what seven dialects actually if you go right now in the Middle East you will find that every city have its own dialect and not only every city it can be even every uh, territory of the city it speak differently from the other side of the city so those are not one nation those Bedouin they are from many many different places and I believe that there's a huge uh, uh, like uh, influence or let us say inheritance of people who they are coming from India or Pakistan today into the Middle East if you look at the pictures as an example let me uh, show you some images. This is the Prince of Qatar today, the one who is ruling Qatar. If I say to you this guy from Pakistan, you will believe me, right? If I say to you he is a Pakistani, none of you will object. Is that correct? None of you will say no. It can't be. Actually, he look 100% Pakistani. This is his father. He is a Pakistani, isn't he? Now, if we go and look at the map, you will find that those, you know, Pakistan is really close to us. It's just a few hours by ship. And you will be in Pakistan. And that explains a lot about all the ritual practice which happened around the Kaaba. Around the Kaaba, people did dress like Hindu. They have a sheet, they show one shoulder, they shave their head, they wear a sandal, they have a black stone, and they go around it. You understand me? They are, there's, there's nothing is called Arab. None of those two people call them Arab are Arab. Arab is whoever live in the desert, they call him Arab. And the one who gave them the name is the Aramaic. So the Arabia is a desert, and the Arabian is those who live in the desert. If now, if the Aramaic now is exists in America, and you live in Arizona, they will call you Arab. You live in Las Vegas, they will call you Arab. 
All right. However, this is not really our topic, but just to give you an idea, a little bit about what we will talk about. Uh, the problem is because of the copy paste method, the Christians they start carrying words and they spread it uh, even through those who they are ministers and priests. There is one problem always we have to face in our churches that there's many people they are not qualified to be in this stage and yet they became our teachers I found this is online a, a Muslim guy he made this descendant of Abraham Adam Noah Abraham and then Isaac Ishmael and then he put in the side uh, religion date Hinduism Musa's the Torah Jesus Christ and suddenly he made a line all the way from Ishmael to Muhammad but you see you will not find anywhere in the Quran where it says that Muhammad is coming from Ishmael I mean how that is missing in the Quran you know what I mean like who is a Muslim want to show me one verse in the Quran it says Muhammad is from Ishmael Any Muslim? How come in the Quran, the Quran give us details? Jesus is the son of Mary. Okay. Ishmael is the son of Abraham. Wonderful. Jacob is the son of Abraham. Uh-huh. All those are the seed of Abraham. Israel which is Jacob name you know Isaac the tribes all of those are the children of Abraham but where is Muhammad the descendant of Abraham where in the Quran it says that and here we need to ask ourselves a very simple question if the Quran the book of Muhammad itself never say so so how the Muslims they come to this idea that Muhammad is from Abraham any Muslim can tell me this is the this is the Quran in front of me who is a Muslim want to show me where a verse it says that Muhammad is from the children of Abraham or he is from Ishmael Anyone? You see, even the Quran mentioned to us details. Abraham have a children's, but if you, you know, and those uh, those details are coming starting from the Bible, not from Muhammad. Muhammad, he have no idea. You see, Muhammad, you do not know what Ibrahim mean. And by the way, there's nothing. It's called Ibrahim. Muhammad was so confused. Sometimes he called him Ibrahim. Some sometimes he called him Abraham. As usual, he have no idea. And now in the Arabic Quran, in all the print, they took all the words which is was coming as Abraham, and they make it Ibrahim. So now there's no one verse saying Abraham and the other one saying Ibrahim. Now they made all the verses Ibrahim, but those who they are Muslim and they have, uh, you know, let us say knowledge, they knew that the Quran in the original Quran, there was Abraham and there was Ibrahim. And if there is a Muslim who would like to call me to prove it, I can, no problem, you know. Well, what we need is somebody who speak Arabic and we will show you. So the Quran speak about Abraham, but he do not know who is Abraham. And how we know that Quran does not know who is Abraham? The Quran claimed that the guy, his name is Ibrahim. His father, his name is Azar.
Have you ever heard of a God who do not know the real name of the father of Abraham? This is how Muhammad he put it and this is what Muhammad he thought about it and this is what Muhammad he taught it but the fact that this word Azar is coming from the old Aramaic which means foolish or fool so Abraham was saying to his father foolish foolish are you going to worship idols but because Muhammad is a thief and he stole this sentence from somebody else he thought that Azar is the name of the father of Abraham. So it's confirmed that the founder of the cult of Islam, he do not know what is the true name of the father of Abraham, which is mentioned clearly in the Old Testament. So the Abraham, the person we speak about in the Quran, is a stolen let us say, uh, uh, copyrighted story from the Old Testament. And the thief, he did some change because he's a fool. He thought by doing some changes, people would not notice that he's a thief. And by doing those changes, he got himself busted. Anyone who is a Christian and he say to you that the Arab is from Ishmael, tell him, show us the verses in the Bible, please, where it says so. Can we do that? I mean, isn't it hard? Is it hard to say, okay, show me where it says that he, the, the those who you call them, Muhammad and etc., he is from Ishmael. Where do you get this from? Can you show us? Why you don't ask him? Show us. There's a few verses in the Bible is speaking about Ishmael and his children. And none of them saying what they are saying. Not even one. This is the copy-paste priest. This is the copy-paste priest. Is a fake priest, or let us say, he, he he's lazy. He decided not to study. He decided not to learn. He decided not to ask questions. He decided not to know. Because if somebody says to me, "Well, Ishmael is the father of the Arab," shouldn't I check first who are they, the Arab, and then see if really this is true? As the Bible says, all those who they are from Ishmael, including Ishmael, they live in what is called the territory of uh, Gaza today, the Delta and the, and Gaza between Egypt and Israel. This is where he lived. And that's very uh, normal, makes sense. Why? Because his mother is Hajar and she is Egyptian. Secondly, if you look at the names, of the children of Ishmael, you will not find a single one is an Arabic name. To make it simple for you, I mean, why in the world I will not carry the name of my grandfather? Even now today, I speak different language. I will make it simple for you. How many of you, their names today is John, but yet you are not a Jewish. I mean, you are not descended from Israel. How many their names is Israel, but they are not descended from Israel? How many their names is uh, Ishmael? So why in the world the descendant of Ishmael, they stop using the names of their fathers? So if the Arab belong to Ishmael, then we should have all the names of the children of Ishmael belong to those Arab, but we don't find them. And for those who speak Arabic, in two seconds he will notice that none of those names fit with the Arabic language. And they mean nothing in Arabic. So the question will be, 
What language Ishmael he used to name his children? You know what I mean? <clears throat> Do we have any Muslim listening? Any Muslim would like to call us? <clears throat> no Muslims? And you know, uh, many people, they, they, uh, um, they counter any name of any nation or any group who live in the Arab desert, they call them all Arab. So there is ancient nations who live in the Middle East. Let us open the map. All right, this is the map. Let us try to make it more clear. All right. <clears throat> If you look at this territory, you will find that this territory hold many, many, many ethnic groups. Many. Aramaic. The um, uh, what they called Al Kanaaniin, which those who live in in Gaza today. Uh, the Nabatean, who live in the desert of Jordan. Uh, I mean many many groups, but those are not connected. They have nothing to do with each, each other They are not from one nation. They are not they don't speak one language They don't even have the same look they don't even have the same face And because of the invasion Many invasions happen in this land. I mean, this land never stopped having invasion since it exists. Before Alexander the Great and after Alexander the Great, nothing changed. So you will find that the look of those people are very, very, uh, very between them. Uh, some they have a blue eyes, some they have a green eyes, some they have dark skin. When we say dark, does not mean black, but darker. Some they have a big nose, some they have tiny nose, some they have, uh, you know, I mean, like if you go right now in Turkey, the Turkish are coming from the Mongolian, and the Mongolian, all of us, we knew that they are Asian. But Turkey, after they occupy the empire, the East Empire uh, of uh, the Roman Empire, the Constantinia, they rape all the blonde women who they are there, and now Turkish people, they don't look like Mongolian at all. They look like almost European, and actually there's many, a lot of them, they are totally blonde. So this is a land nobody can claim to be belong to any ethnic group, unless he is from certain established group, like the Aramaic. And the Aramaic themselves are not one ethnic. They are like, let us say, groups of ethnic, but all of them, they belong to Aram. Like they are old, let us say, a civilization of the Aramaic destroyed, then a new civilization are born of the Aramaic from their children. So we can say they are connected, but they are different at the same time. So now, you know, if you, if you go and study the Bible carefully, you will find that the children of Ishmael, all of them they came and live in this territory let us draw a line 
you know so people can see with us what we are talking about <clears throat> we can say generally speaking that they live in this area that's it they did not go anywhere and obviously the mother Hajar herself she is from there this is why she came back to where to belong Abraham he sent his wife he said to her you are free to go anywhere you want and he she went out with her son and it's very normal for a woman to go back where she is coming from and she is an Egyptian and the Bible says that clearly and this is Egypt here this is the border of Egypt Cairo is less than maybe 200 miles away People who live in the desert here are called Arab for a very simple reason because the word Arab means desert. Any desert, anyone who lives in the desert, he is Arab. So if you live in the in the in the desert of Syria, in this area or Iraq, you are Arab. If you live in the desert of Saudi Arabia, you are Arab. If you live in the desert of Arizona, you are Arab. Arab is not an ethnic, it's not a nation. And they don't have one father even in Islamic books they confirm that Ishmael he learned Arabic if you have my book the Session of Allah you will find the Muslims agree that Ishmael he learned Arabic according to them at the age of 14 so how the father of the Arab learning Arabic from the Arab do you understand what I'm saying if I go right now to China and marry Chinese and I learn from the Chinese Chinese how that in the world will make me the father of the Chinese that would be the most silly stupid thing ever to say always the son belonged to his father so if Ishmael Is it from Abraham? Abraham. That means Ishmael consider himself Aramaic. And that explains all the names we see, which is descendant from Aramaic, not from Arabic or anything. All the names. Which is sound like Hebrew because Hebrew itself is born of the Aramaic. Hebrew is just a new language of the Aramaic language. This is why when you pray, all of you and the Muslims, they copy that from the from the from the Hebrew, and they copy it from the Aramaic. When they end the prayer, they say Amin. You will see that the Christians, Muslims, Jews, they say Amin. But this is because of the theft of Muhammad. Otherwise, this is have nothing to do with the Arabic. This is an Aramaic word. I mean, I agree, I believe, I uh, I go for that. Additional to all of this, not only the Arab, they are not one nation, and there's nothing is called Arab as a nation. And Ishmael, his children have nothing to do with the Arab. Remember that Moses in the Bible, he did marry a Bedouin woman. Moses. I never heard of priests saying that Moses is the father of the Arab. <laughs> I mean, let us say for the sake of argument, somebody will say that uh, Mo uh, uh, Ishmael, he married an Arabian woman. Okay, well, Moses married an Arabian woman. Desert woman. Arab we told you that the word Arabia, Arabian, mean desert. Bedouin. This is what Arabian mean, a Bedouin person. You see, if you go to the Quran, if you go to the yellow pages of Muhammad, you will find the following. The Quran call the Bedouin Arab. The Arabian. All those verses are mentioning the word Arab. Arab. 
what what does that mean what does that mean Bedouin <laughs> do you see it <laughs> do you see it this is the translation but in Arabic it says the Arab in Arabic it says the Arab in the translation is coming as the Bedouin because this is a true this is what it is those who live in the desert <laughs> you know what I mean? same as the word Bedouin this is an Aramaic Bedou everything you see in front of you is born of the Aramaic even this language here in the front of us with the letters with the way it is written this is Aramaic this is you know like the the, the font change etc but it's still it's in the origin of it it's Aramaic this is a new way by the way to write Arabic I mean this is not what this is this is not the way the Arabic was in the time of Muhammad in the time of Muhammad it was almost 80 90 percent of it written like Aramaic and uh, if you look at those numbers those numbers we see in the front of us those are Aramaic the numbers you use today like in English you know one two three four five six this is the alphabet and it is numbers in the same time Aramaic are the most interesting smart intelligent nation ever exist in history The word Europe is Aramaic. The word Africa is Aramaic. All the numbers you see, you use today in English, those are coming from the alphabet of the Aramaic. The Aramaic alphabet is numbers. Maybe we should make a. Let us see. Maybe we can find something to help. All right, but maybe not too much clear. But you see, this is those are this the alphabet you are using today. The numbers you are using today are the alphabet of the Aramaic. And the the look it change by time. The look change, like number one is Aleph A. This is number one. You know, number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. So this is an alphabet which is contain numbers at the same time. This is why you you know if you if you remember in the Quran we have words which Muslims cannot understand. Kahayas, chapter 19, verse number 1. If you ask Muslims what this is mean, kaf, ha, ya, ain, salt. In fact, it doesn't say that in the Quran. It doesn't say kaf, ha, ya, ain. That's silly. It's one word, as you see here. It is just one word. Kahayas, what does that mean? They don't know. Allah knows best. And they start guessing. Everyone give you his own guessing. Kahayas simply is collection of Aramaic numbers, which is alphabet, which is equal to numbers, which will give you a sentence. I mentioned to you before that Kahayas is a biblical sentence.
<clears throat> it'll show you All right. I'm just trying to find Here we go. We found something to help. If you look here, you will find in the Arabic uh, alphabet, which is coming from the Aramaic alphabet anyway, I don't know if it's clear for you or not. This is the letter Alif. Uh, hold on. It's asking me to log in too. Hold on. We click by mistake. Let me take a snapshot so because each time I click in it, it asks me to go and log in. It's an image in Google, you know. All right, take selfie. All right, sorry for the little bit of delay. Now we have it. All right. And let us take this one down. All right. Here you see those are the Arabic alphabet, which is born of the Aramaic. Letter A is equal to 1. Letter B equal to 2 etc so like you go by the alphabet and you will notice with me that uh, this is how to explain to you how this this thing work because maybe some of you will be confused why why the letter here is equal to 1000 what does that mean so from the letter 1 to the letter 10 yeah the numbers are equal to its position by order so letter a is equal to 1 letter b is equal to 2 letter j is equal to 3 etc and then the last letter in the number 10 now the letter number 10 yeah is equal to 10 then right that after that the letter number 11 will be double of the previous number before it so letter, letter number k or k is equal to 20 which means we add just 10 to every number to follow so now l is equal to 30 m is equal to 40 etc until we arrive to the number the letter number 20 and then the number will be double to the a, a previous you know what i mean so this is the letter here you will notice here right away it says 100 Qa is equal to 100 letter after it is equal to 200 Letter after it is equal to 300, etc., until we arrive to 1000. Okay, what does that mean exactly? If we go back to Kahayas, we can take those numbers and we will see what they are equal for. As you see here, Ka is equal to 20. Let us make a different color. 
This is the letter K equal to 20. Now, where is the letter H? Letter H is number 5. Where is the letter Y? Is equal to 10. Where is the letter A? Uh, uh, uh. Uh, find me out <laughs> I forgot how here we go is equal to 70 and then the last letter is sod or saw all right and this is saw so if we calculate those letters together the total will be a number which is equal to the sentence which is saying actually let us show it to you in the screen so you can understand it better. I will put the letters next to each other. <clears throat> Give me a second. <clears throat> All right. This is the word chaos equal k is equal to 20 ha is equal to 5 10 is equal to 10 uh, I mean uh, 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 sorry uh, yeah is equal to 10 uh, ah is equal to 70 and then sod so is equal to 90 total is 195 the word the Messiah by letters is equal 1 plus 30 plus 40 plus 60 plus 10 plus 8 and a number is equal to what to the number to the alphabet to the letters This is the word in Messiah Equal to 149 Kahayas is equal to 195 The word Ilahi which means my God is equal to 1 plus 30 plus 5 plus 10 46 Kahayas mean El Masihu Ilahi, which means the Messiah is my God. 195. Muhammad is a thief. He stole that word. He did not know what it does mean. And not a single Muslim can tell you what this word means. Because simply it is not a word, it's a coding. The Aramaic they used to use coding, especially after Christianity spread between them. So the Roman they start discriminating anyone who follow Christianity will be killed. So if somebody want to say to somebody, the Messiah is my God, he will say Kahayas. The Roman, if he speak Aramaic still, he will not know what he's saying. What does that mean? If somebody wrote a letter to somebody, he will not be able to read it because what does it mean? It means nothing. Which language is that? Right? And there is something very important we need to remember about this chaos. Where do we find the word chaos? Anyone remember? Just to show you that this is about the Messiah. It's very clear. If we go to chaos, you will find that this is in the chapter of Mary. <laughs> is it it? It's obvious. It is in the chapter speaking about Miriam. The first verse in the chapter of Miriam it says, The Messiah is my God. Do you see it? No, the Muslim do not know what the Messiah mean. You know, you see, uh, the, this guy, Mr. Justice, he says the Muslim know that the Messiah is the anointed one. Show me where your prophet says that. Show me where the Quran says that. You are getting this from the Bible, from the Christians? Where you? Where you get this from? <laughs> so, a clear evidence. And then, Oh, uh, actually everything in front of us is making it clear that 
this is about the religion of the Jews and this is about the belief of the Jews and this is about the God of the Jews I told you one million times that the names in the Quran all of it belong to the to the God of the Jews when a Muslim he say Ishmael do you do a Muslim knows who is a Muslim will tell us what Ishmael mean they don't know the second you say Ishmael you are speaking about the God of the Jews what his name what they call him all those names belong to the God of the Jews the God of Moses when you say Israel Israel Ishmael even Abraham Zechariah all of those names are summaries of the God of the Jews so every single page in this Quran proven to us that Muhammad is a thief and he stole names from the Bible he do not know what he what they mean you know I'm talking about names which are in the Quran not different names and this is what happened here chaos Muhammad he took it you do not know what it mean you go to interpretation every Muslim he give you his own they, they start like uh, predicting maybe ka mean uh, <laughs> uh, kebab <laughs> they don't know they have no idea because this religion is a theft if there is any Muslim would like to call me please feel free all right I will be happy to hear you now there is something very important too Do you know what Jesus said even to the Jews who they are real descendant from Abraham? Anyone remember? Just to show you how we as a Christians we are not really studying very well. We are not giving our book the time which deserve to learn from it. If we go in the Bible, let us see. Give me a second, please. <clears throat> All right. If we go to the book of John, the Bible, according to our beloved disciple John when the Messiah he went and he spoke he was speaking to the Jews the one who around him is the Jews the Jews they said to him and they keep repeating to him we are the seeds of Abraham we are what we are the children of Abraham they are proud And those are the real seeds of Abraham, not like Muhammad, who is had nothing to do with Abraham, not even close. They said to him, Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died? And the prophets who have died? Because the Messiah, he said, whoever keeps my words shall never see death. So they were wondering how that can be. <laughs> what, this, what this person is talking about. Are you greater than our father Abraham? Abraham is dead. The prophet are dead. And are you saying whoever keeps my word shall never taste death? Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? And the prophet who have died? Who are you making yourself? Yeshua said to them. 
if I glorify myself my glory is nothing it is my father who glorify me he of whom you say he is our God and you do not know him but I know him and if I had said that I do not know him I myself would have been a liar like you but I do know him and I keep his words Abraham your father desire to see my day and he saw it and he rejoiced and rejoiced the Jews they were saying to him you are not 50 years old and you have seen Abraham Yeshua said to them timeless truth I speak to you before Abraham I am exist I am the living God so when somebody says Abrahamic what does that mean based on this verse we just show and we saw in the front of our, our eyes anyone understand what I'm trying to say to you when somebody says I am Abrahamic No screen. I apologize. Sorry. Hold on. It's my fault. It's all right. No problem. I mean, uh, uh, the book of John, you know, the book of John, you can open it from your side. So when somebody says, I am Abrahamic, what does that mean exactly? Based on the verse we are showing you. I did not open Skype yet. I will open it soon. Anyone knows what, what I'm trying to say to you? What Abrahamic should mean? The blood of Abraham? Maybe. Actually, it's more than that. Look, look read carefully with me. Read carefully. Anyone can help me it's believe in Jesus exactly to be Abrahamic is to be as Abraham he rejoiced when he saw the day of Jesus. Is not just someone he is descendant from Abraham. Jesus said to them, Well, if you are from Abraham, then do the work of your father. The answer they said to him, Abraham is our father. Yeshua, he said to them, if you were children of Abraham, you would have been doing the work of Abraham. And what Abraham he did, he rejoiced by seeing Jesus. Do you understand? Do we understand? So this is the biblical teaching about the seeds of Abraham. The seed of Abraham is not somebody is born of Abraham, is somebody believe in the God of Abraham, which is the Messiah, the Jesus, the Christ. And who is the one who is saying that? This is the Messiah himself. This is not a priest. Don't follow a priest. Don't follow foolishness. This is the Messiah, the Lord himself. He says to the Jews who they are really, really from the seeds of Abraham. They are not making it out. They are not fabricating. They are not lying. They are saying, yes, Abraham is our father. He's our great father. And yet Jesus said to them, well, if you are of Abraham, then you do the work of Abraham. Obviously, you are not. So according to the Messiah, the one who considered to be from Abraham is the one who rejoice for the name of the Messiah as he said here Abraham your father desired to see me to see my day and he saw it and he rejoiced which means he worshiped Jesus <coughs> he prayed to Jesus and he accepted the Messiah as God <coughs>
Do you see it? Which means even if somebody he is a from descendant of Abraham and real, still he is not Abrahamic. Because to be Abrahamic is to be Christian, not to be descendant from Abraham by seeds. Do you understand? <clears throat> And if the Messiah himself did not accept the Jews to be calling himself Abrahamic, I mean, who is the who else can claim to be Abrahamic? And from this, we understand that Abraham was a Christian. Correct? Abraham, he is a Christian. He is not Abrahamic. He is just a Christian like us. What, what Abrahamic mean? Following, believing in the same God of Abraham. Well, this is the God of Abraham, the Messiah. Abraham, your father, he desired to see my day. And when he saw it, and we know the Old Testament speak about God, the Lord, he came to Abraham as a man in the flesh. And the Muslim, they say to you, where in the Old Testament it says that God became as a man. And you will see here the Messiah said before Abraham would exist I am the living God and yet they said to you where Jesus says I'm God I hope we learn today something very important that Abrahamic is those who they are Christians not even the Jews who refuse Jesus Do we understand? For Abraham himself is a Christian. And to be Abrahamic is to do the work of your father Abraham. Not to be Abrahamic by name. Not to be Christian by name. This is why the Lord he said. Many they will say to me Lord, Lord. And then he will say to them, depart from me. I do not know you. Go away. Who are you? Not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. So you call yourself Abrahamic. You call yourself a Christian. You call yourself worshiping the true God. Call yourself whatever you want. From their fruits, you will know them. That is the truth, my friend. I will open my Skype in case there is a Muslim want to talk to us. <coughs> All right, we are logging in. All right. Call me, please. The Muslim who said he want to talk. I just send you a text message. <clears throat> so what we learned today is the following. If anyone says to you, I am Abrahamic, then you say to him what Jesus said. You answer him as Jesus said. Look what Jesus said to him. I know, I know you are the seed of Abraham, but you seek to kill me because you cannot comprehend my words. They said Abraham is our father. He said, if you are children of Abraham, but he just said to them, you are children of Abraham. I know. So he is saying to them, if you were truly, not by seed only, because children of somebody is somebody 
is being proud of that person of what what are you proud about Abraham what he did exactly is about believing in that in the true God that's all this is the only thing you can be proud about Abraham otherwise Abraham is the same as any other man so if you are if you were of the children of Abraham then you do the work of your of, of Abraham did Muhammad do the work of Abraham Did Muhammad teach the teaching of Abraham? Let us see this Muhammad and what he want to say to us. Yes, my friend, you are live here. What do you want to say to us? Um, you are the one who called me. Um, yeah, I but maybe because you told them, you told them you want to talk to me, correct? No, I didn't. Okay. Who told you? Here we go. What, why are you sending me this guy? Why are you sending me this guy? So why? How we knew your ID if you are not asking me to call you? Why you are giving us your Skype ID? To put it in the in the in the saloon as a picture. To make jelly uh, ice cream with it. So you are posting your ID for us in Skype to call you or or to just uh, to say hello. What is that? What a drama. They keep posting their ID, you know, I challenge you, call me, call me, and okay, okay. And then we call them, they say, well, you are calling me. Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? Anyone? Any Muslim would like to call us? May they, may they. Any Muhammadan? No problem. So let us let us make it clear that the Bible is more than just a book. You see, the, the, the Messiah he said, You want to kill me because you cannot comprehend my words. Correct? I know you are the seed of Abraham. But you seek to kill me because you cannot comprehend my word. So anyone who cannot comprehend, and obviously they don't want to comprehend because they don't want to comprehend. It's not because Jesus is making it complicated. They don't want. They play arrogant. They play the ignorant. They, they knew he is saying that he is God. He knew that he is coming God in the flesh. He is saying that clearly, and this is why he did put him in the cross. So when Muhammad he deny the Messiah to be divine, he is not Abrahamic. When the when Muhammad he denied the father and the son, what the Bible says? Who is the liar? Who is the liar? The liar. The Antichrist is the one who deny the father and the son. <clears throat> Mr. Light, please don't use those language in Arabic. There's no need for Ibn Jazma and uh, you know, what does that mean? I mean, come on. Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? Don't use a bad language and don't, you know, be, be, be mature. Don't speak like Muslims. I will block you.
Anyone? Who is a Muslim? He is a proud about his religion. You see, the Muslim they keep saying to us, "I am, I am, a, I, we, we are a people who believe in one God." Okay, who is your God? You don't even know the name of your God. I never saw one Muslim he knew what his God name is, and I can prove it to you right now. Who is a Muslim when I tell, when I tell us the name of his God? <laughs> they don't know. They didn't know what Abraham mean. They don't know what Ishmael mean. They don't know what Israel mean. And, and not only that, you know, if you go in the Quran, I mean, this Quran is really funny. Just to give you an example. In chapter 6, verse number 84. This is this is a this is a hilarious book. And we gave him, uh, we gave him who? Abraham. Okay, we gave him who? We gave him Isaac and Jacob. Okay, where is Ishmael? What happened? What happened? If Ishmael was the elder in the family, how you mentioned two before the older? You know what I mean? And then look at this mixing. And we give him Isaac and Jacob and guide each of them and Noah. What Noah have to do with this guy? How Noah story jump in this verse. We are talking about Isaac and Jacob and Abraham and Noah we guided before. And then he go, he go all the way back and then suddenly he go to the middle and from his offspring, David. What? So why you put Noah up here? And Solomon. And Job and Joseph and Moses and Aaron. And then he go and he jump and Zechariah and John and Isa, not Jesus, and Elias. Do you know who's Elias? Any Muslim can tell us who is this guy, Elias? Who is Elias? Just to show you the theft, any Muslim can tell us who is who is Mr. Elias. They don't know. They stole names. And then suddenly he rem he go back to Ishmael. Like, but now you remember Ishmael. You remember Zechariah and John and Jesus and Elias and then and Ishmael. What Ishmael is doing here? Is that an order? I mean, is Ishmael is the brother of Elijah or something or Jonah? What is this? Shish kebab hummus. I remember when I, you know, like we were young the kids, uh, we went, uh, you know, to the guy who make hummus, and a fly fell in the hummus. Fly. My, my cousin, he saw the fly. He told him, uh, the fly, there's a fly here. The guy, he keep moving the thing to smash the hummus. And he says, where it is? It's gone in the hummus. He smashed it inside the food. And this is what the Muhammad he do. He put Ishmael between the hummus. And now you have to find Ishmael. And where we can find Ishmael, we find him after counting Noah, David. Solomon, Job, Joseph, Moses, Aaron, Zechariah, John, 
Jesus, Elias, and then Ishmael. Ela, El Elisha, Jonah. I mean, what is that? Loot. This is what happened when you have a fake prophet. And now, if we ask a Muslim, Ishmael is the son of Abraham from who? Any Muslim can tell us? <clears throat> Anyone? How we will know Ishmael, how, how Abraham he got Ishmael? <laughs> Where we can find the story about Ishmael in the Quran? The Quran have time to tell us about the ants speaking to the ants. But we cannot find any information about Ishmael. <clears throat> Any Muslim can tell us where we can find? How we can find who is the mother of Ishmael? Anyone? How we can find where Ishmael live after that? You see, the Quran says, And remember when we made the house a place of reward for mankind and sanctuary take the van the venue of a prayer from Abraham station okay Muslims how we will find where Abraham station is located where it is here we go we have a Quran in front of us how we will know what is this station is that the house he built in Israel or this is the house which you Muslims go around how we will know what house do you know that all the cities in Israel today which is called Beit, Beit. is this is what the word here in Arabic here it says bait this is this is Aramaic bait see I told you I told you Arabic is not Arabic there's nothing it's called Arabic bait Beit is mean house. Beit Lahem. <laughs> the house of a bread. Beit, uh, Beit, uh, Beit, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's tons of Beit. If you go and search right now, if you search right now in Israel, about how many towns, how many towns, their names start with Beit, which means every one of those, they have a temple. Beit. So Abraham he built a bait. Where is this bait is located? Any Muslim can help us? The Muslim they say to us, <clears throat> it is the Kaaba. But hold on, look at this. <laughs> Make this a secure town. Doesn't say by the way this. It says in Arabic, "Ijal hada baladan aminan." So it's a it's a city. It's a it's a it's not it's not just Abraham and Ishmael alone. There's people there. Secure this country. Secure this 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 cities. Baladan actually better me make more of a. Uh, like uh, a place of busy crowded place like a country so we say like in Arabic Bilad Sham country which is full of cities and towns so Abraham saying secure you secure the towns which town
which city? If we search in the Quran, we will find the following. There's mention in the Quran. <coughs> Once for the city of Mecca in this verse, okay, where we can find the city. You see, here you notice that the temple which is in the house, or let's say the temple which is in Mecca, is called. The sacred mosque, Al Masjid Al Haram. Allah did not call it Bait in this verse. Masjid, what happened to the word Bait? Where is the word Bait? Where we can't find this Bait? Any Muslim? Islam is a collection of hummus. Nothing makes sense. Nothing absolutely makes sense. You have to be a genius to collect the dots and make an image. Because this is not a book. This is a collection of tale stories written long after Muhammad. Another verse in the Quran, this is the only verse mentioned in Mecca, 48, 24, and there's nothing there. Then we find this. In chapter three, verse number 96, look at this. It says, indeed the first house to be set up for mankind is the one at Bakka. Bakka. Muslims, where is Bakka? Is that where the The city of rock the Betra any Muslim can tell us what what, what Becca mean <clears throat> any Muslim What Bakka? Who is a Muslim have an answer? No, actually, I don't believe that this is really the Bakka is the one in Petra, you know, but there is some uh, They have their own theory believe this is this is Bakka. <clears throat> I have my different. I have different theory you see <coughs> Mecca is the same word as Bakka. Mecca I don't know this typer is very slow. So Mecca and Bakka, the difference between them is the first letter. Hmm? And that because the way some people they pronounce it, and because Muhammad is collecting religion from others, so sometimes it is Mecca, sometimes it is Bakka. However, if you remember, if you remember, I mentioned to you before. 
that there is a house. It's called the house of Al Makkah. The letter Ka in some dialect appear as Qa. See, this is the this is the letter in the middle of the letter of the word Mecca. You see, for you in English, no, the word disappear. In English, you say Mecca because you don't have equal letter. You use that are seen for the letter K. Right? This is letter K. Letter K in some dialect appear as a call. The same as like now in Egypt, when they say J, they say go, go. They don't say George, they say gorge. Or I don't know how to say it. Geet. He don't say Jeet, he say Geet. So Ka in some dialect is Ka. Which you don't have equal letter for it. Makkah. Makkah and Mecca, both of them mean like uh, coming from like a dry land where you have to suck the water from the ground. However, this is not really what where the the origin of the name is coming from. Makkah is a name of a temple exist in Yemen. You can go right now and search in a private Google for Temple of Al Makkah. Let us do that. <clears throat> Temple of Al Makkah. Here we go. Give me a second, I will wait for you. This is Al Makkah Temple. Al Makkah, you see, Al Makkah. I told you before that A L mean God, right? So God of Al Makkah, Al Makkah is the name of the temple of the Moon God, which is built. It's an ancient temple exists in Yemen. For long people they thought it is, uh, you know, uh, a temple of the sun, but then later they discover, after they uh, were able to understand the language. Which is not Arabic, you know, and this is this is telling us that when they say that the people of Yemen they are the origin of the Arab, this is a lie, because all ancient inscribed exist in Yemen. None of it is Arabic and have nothing to do in Arabic. So, Al Makkah Temple is Mak Makkah. So what Muhammad he did in the Quran saying that the first temple was built is the temple of al Makkah, the first house of Allah, which is the moon god, is the house of al Makkah. Are we learning? This is what the Quran is saying. And the Muslim are people who they are disconnected with the Quran. You see, the Quran has nothing to do with what they are saying. There's 90% 90, 90 of things Muslims today believe in is not exist in the Quran as they believe. I told you, Bakka is the same as Makkah. You see, the Arab, the uh, the bend in the location, they say instead of saying uh, the the letter M, sometimes appear as B. I will give you an example. Uh, we Arab, we say Yeshua to Yeshua. 
so where is that coming from in Arabic it's coming from the Aramaic Aramaic sometimes they pronounce the letter is as sheen as seen like Sams and Shams so until now there's people they say Sams and Shams Sams mean Sun Shams mean Sun Al Makkah is the temple of the moon God is not the Kaaba they have today Are we following? This is what the Quran confirm, and this is the first house of worship built for Allah, the Moon God, and this is true. How are you, Mr. Muslim? Are you a Muslim, my friend? Please try not to flood the text for those who they are posting images. We appreciate if you post a text which is useful and not silly. Do we have any Muhammadan who would like to call us? Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Mecca today is a counterfeit of the temple of Al Makkah. This is why, if you go and see, let me show you more clear evidence. <clears throat> All right. In the Kaaba, in the Kaaba, there's a corner. Let us show you. Look at this pagan cult. Look how they, they want to kiss it, they want to touch it. You know, this is called the Yemeni corner. The Yemen corner. Why it's called Yemen? Why it's called Yemeni corner? Because here there's some stones they don't fit with the other stones. Do you see it with me? Do you know? Do you, do you notice, guys? Do you notice that those stones look different? They are not the same. What are they, those stones? Let us see if we can get an image. Which is more close and more clear. Uh, we need more clear image. Those are stones were taken from the temple of Al Makkah. So in order, why you want to go all the way to the temple of Al Makkah, which is in Yemen, so you can get the blessing of the moon god? We brought you some stones from there. You touch them as if you were in the temple of Al Makkah. You know what I mean? Those are holy rocks from the holy temple of Al Makkah, the moon god. <clears throat> Any Muslim would like to prove me wrong? And this is why it's called the Yemeni corner. Now look, let us see what Muhammad he said about the Yemeni corner. Is the Yemeni corner something special in Islam? 
why the Muslims are coming to it to touch it look at this why they are fighting this one actually the best look at this one this one is the most clear one do you see how how clear it is that those stones are inserted there they are they don't fit with the rest of the stones you know this they are coming from different area What Muhammad he said about these stones? Anyone remember? No, they are not really totally black. They are different. You see, the stones of the Kaaba are totally black because they are a volcano stones. Those are different. What Muhammad he said about those stones? The Kaaba, the reason they cover it because there is a guy who, who went uh, to different areas supposedly and he learned that the pagan in different area they cover their gods so he decided to do the same for the Kaaba this is what they claim I don't know but it might be way more deeper but I cannot confirm unless I have reference what Muhammad he said forgive sin thank you who is the one who said that who is the one said forgive sin Sahih Christian how are you my brother so here Christian guys this guy I know him I don't know 15 years maybe more maybe 18 years I'm not sure <laughs> he's a wonderful body a wonder he's a wonderful Christian God bless you and your family my friend uh, if you go in the hadith as our brother Sahih Christian said Muhammad claimed that the black stone and the Yemeni corner stones they forgive your sin Do you see it? A man he said to Abu Abdul Rahman, Oh Abu Abdul Rahman, why do I only see you touching those two corners? Which corners? The black stone corner and the Yemen corner. He said, I heard the messenger of Allah saying, Touching them erases the sin. And I had I, I heard him say, Whoever go around them seven times. It's like freeing slave. So why Muhammad is trying to say that touching the Yemeni corner will forgive sin? Any Muslim can tell us why? Here we go. Work your your uh, your propaganda. Like let us see what you can come with an answer. Black stone is sent by Allah. And Allah, He placed it in the earth, and it, this black stone was white and came from heaven. All this uh, garbage. Okay, now the, the Yemeni corner. What is the stones there? They are holy to the point. If you touch them, your your, your sin is forgiven. No, He did not sp spend any time in Yemen. This is not the, the question about Yemen, but but this is the religion was spread all over. You see, this is an ancient. Religion spread all over the Middle East, not only in Yemen, but obviously the Yemeni temple of the moon god is one of the ancient ones. And this is what the Quran is saying the first house to worship Al La, which means God La, it was the house of Mecca, Bakka, which is the temple of Al Makka. <clears throat> Any Muslim? Any Muslim want to prove me wrong? 
What is the power in this corner, the Yemeni corner, to forgive your sin? Allah, he, play, he placed his forgiveness inside those stones? If Islam is not a pagan cult, how in the world, if we touch stones, our sins are forgiven? And the funny, the Muslim, they say and they claim that the Hindus are pagan, the Christians are pagan, the Buddhas are pagan, and they are monotheist. But yet their God is a stone. <clears throat> Right. Uh, we have a, a person saying, "Allah does not mean Allah." Prove me wrong. You see, you can say it's it, it, uh, talk is cheap. I can prove it easy from the Quran. <laughs> Correct. I do prove it every day that Allah is not one word. It's Allah. El, the word mean God, and La is the name of their God. Prove me wrong. <clears throat> Just to show you how much ignorant. So-called proof. Let me show you from the Quran additional proof. Just to satisfy your needs. If we go in the Quran, we will find the following. And I will show you your Islamic translation. Chapter 53, verse number 19. Read carefully what you will see with me. Have you then considered Al-Lat and Al-Uzza? Who are they? Al-Uzza and Al-Lat. They are goddess. Why they add Al before them? For they are divine. God-Uzza, God-Lat. And here we go, Al-Lat. <laughs> Do you see it? Your God and his daughters, all of them, their names started with Al. Manat is the only one that does not start in the Quran with Al. And the reason he did not, supposedly because he want to make it sound easier for pronunciation. Hmm? If you go to the uh, uh, there's tons of verses showing us how L appear, but just to show the ignorance of the one who wrote the Quran. <clears throat> when you start reading the names of your God, what do you say? In the name of L La L Rahman. El Rahim. <laughs> Let us analyze. Those are the first three names appear in the Quran. El La. Let us type them one by one. And try not to laugh. This is Allah. El La. This is the first one. And then Al Rahman. And then Al Rahim. God Lah, God Rahman. God Rahim. Can you refute that?
El is a word mean God. If you go even to the names in the Quran, <clears throat> you will find the following. Ya Bani Israel, O children of Israel. Do you see it? Here we go. El is a word meaning God. In the ancient Hebrew, it was Al. So Israel used to be Israel. Ishmael used to be Ishmael. Mikael used to be Mikael. And Gabriel used to be Gabriel. So Al either is appearing in the in the in the front of the world to make it about God, or at the end of the world or the name to make it about God. So Muhammad is a thief. He stole all those words. He do not know what they mean. The second he stole the word Israel, he just proved to us that he is a false prophet. Because who is the God we are talking about? How many of you heard the that or some Muslims making fun of the story in the Bible about uh, Israel is struggling with God? You heard that, right? The Muslim they say to you, oh, <laughs> Jacob, he was wrestling with God, huh? <laughs> the angel of God. <laughs> the second you quoted the name, you just get yourself busted. What the name Israel mean, and where it's coming from? They don't know, because Muhammad is a thief. Do you understand, guys? If you ask Muhammad what Mikael mean, you do not know. Okay, Jibreel, you don't know. How you are a prophet of this God, yet you do not know why their names is like this, and what their names mean, and why the God he call his angels by Hebrew names. Anyone can explain to me? Why the God of Islam, who speak Arabic, who write Arabic, and Arabic is written in his throne, why he is using Hebrew words to call his angels in the Quran? I think today our video is kind of uh, too much information. <clears throat> right? Do we have any Muslim would like to say anything? It's obvious. Muhammad, he stole all those names, and those names have nothing to do with Muhammad. And by stealing them, he got himself busted again. He proved to us that he's a liar. Because those names, they don't fit even with his religion. And we said that millions of times. Like now, actually, if I ask, if I ask a Mohammedan, okay, who is Israel? He will not know. Any Muslim can tell me where in the Quran it says who is this guy? His name is Israel, and why his name became Israel? We don't know.
any Muslim can show me what this name mean and where this name is coming from they don't know <laughs> what a cult this is the kind of a cult they knew nothing about anything but yet they claim that Allah is all-knowing who is Israel I mean have you ever heard of a God he say he keeps saying oh children of Israel oh children of Israel but yet this God he never th said who is this guy Israel how we will know who is he this man his name Israel shouldn't the one who taught Muhammad about Israel tell him who is Israel They don't know. No, they cannot say they don't believe in Israel that exists. You see, the problem, the Muslims, they cannot say we deny Israel because it's in the Quran. And not only that, actually, the Quran says that this is the land of the Jews. You see, the problem, most of those who speak with the Muslims and the Muslims, they are ignorant. They don't know. The Quran confirm that the land of Israel is given to them chapter 5 verse number 21 Allah he said to Moses and to his people oh my people enter the holy land which Allah assigned into you do you see it yes Allah is a Zionist <laughs> do you see it they say to you that you this is not your land. <laughs> this is what they say. They say Israel is not the land of the Jews. The, the Quran says so. Not a single time the word Palestine mentioned the Quran. You see here in the translation, they would the word Palestine between two brackets. Never exist in the Quran. Not even once. Once I was doing a seminar <clears throat> in the Philipp in the Philippines, and uh, the guy he stand up, he says, "I heard that you support uh, uh, the Jews." He's upset from me. He's a Muslim, Muhammadan. I said, "What do you mean I support the Jews?" He said, "You keep saying that this is the land of." Uh, I saw in your book, uh, it says that you are saying this is the land of uh, <laughs> the land of the Jews. I said, "As long as you saw my book, didn't you see why I said that?" He said, no, I don't see the reason why. Prove it, prove it. So, okay, open Quran, chapter 5, verse 21. He said, okay, you read it for us. I said, no, you read it for me. He said, you read it. I said, no, you read it. Because I want everybody to laugh. So he uh, opened his phone and he started reading. And I said, okay, read it from number 20 and 21 and 23, 22, 23, 24. And tell me, what do you think? So he started reading. And then he said to me, where, where it says, I said, what's wrong with you? It's in front of you. Isn't it Allah, he says to Moses, to order his people to attack and kill those who they are living there? And they said to him, we will not attack it. We will not enter it. Let your God fight with you. And only two Jews agree with Moses to attack. And according to the Quran, those are the good believers. And then Allah, he punished them for 40 years not to enter the Holy Land because they disobey Allah. And then he looked. He said, uh, yeah, it says that. I said, so why you are saying I support the Jews? It's Allah who support the Jews. Any comment? He sat down and his head is moving around left and right. And then I continue explaining. I said, this is an example of ignorance. Our friend here, he is challenging me to find him a reason to believe that Israel is the land of the Jews when his book is saying that.
and then here again by the way if you ask Muslims you see all those names get Muhammad busted what Moses mean they don't know how Moses called Moses they don't know why God he chose the number 40 to forbid it from uh, from the Jews they don't know they don't know <clears throat> And then, by the way, <coughs> the verse after it, which is very funny. I mean, this Quran is a funny book. I mean, look, here we are talking about Moses. Suddenly, we go back to speak about, tell them the story of Adam, Kabil and Habil. Okay, what they did. They offer not sacrifice, they offer Qurban. What is the origin of the word Qurban? Anyone knows? <clears throat> Who is a Muslim can tell us where this word is coming from? What Qurban? Ask any Hindu. He will tell you we practice Qurbani. What is that? What Qurban mean? How this word is end in the Quran? <clears throat> Any Muslim? No, Quran is a blood sacrifice. Quran is a blood sacrifice. Quran, you never heard the Indian people say Quran, Quran? And then, if you read the story here, you will die laughing. Anyone remember the story? Who remember the story about that the children of Adam and Eve? Uh, uh, you know, what happened? Anyone remember? <clears throat> Qurban, Qurban is a blood sacrifice. Anyway, uh, we can say this is language sharing, no problem, but not the problem. But here there is, there is more. Read carefully. The story of Cain and Abel, that Cain and Abel, both of them, they are supposedly brothers. And according to Muslims, each time Eve, she deliver, she deliver twin. But they are not one twin. They are like uh, one male, one female. And Adam, brother, he used to marry the twin from this delivery, like the male, to the female from the other delivery. You know what I mean? So he don't marry the twin to the same twin from the same delivery. He married him to the other one. But what happened here, brother, that the sister, one of the sister, she have a cross eyes, brother. And now both brother, they want to marry brother, the women or the sister who have no cross eyes. This remind me of the of the story of the guy in the what is called is called the love gear uh, the, the love uh, guru. When they speak about the cross eyes, <laughs> cross eyes, and then Allah, He off asked them to offer sacrifice. Actually, why I'm why I'm showing you this? I mean, let me show you the reference. So, they, because they would say, "Hey, he's lying. It's not true." Where he got this from? Like a liar. He's a liar. <coughs> let us see. <coughs> Five twenty-two. Uh, 
every every interpretation by the way have different uh, mood and different story so when you read Islamic story it doesn't mean they are all the same depend in the hummus the scholar he was eating in that day all right this is Ibn Kathir <coughs> Where is story here? Uh -huh. What, there is no story? Look like Ibn Kathir, he ate it. I know. Well, it's 27, 527, so where it is? This is 5. Ah, 27 here, okay. All right, tell them, tell them uh, the story of uh, the brothers of uh, sons of Adam. All right, what happened? Where is, where is the story? Look like Ibn Kathir in English. The story is eaten by the goat. Where is the story? He is talking about killing, but they are talking about the sacrifice. What is the sacrifice? Um, <clears throat> yeah, here we go. <clears throat> I thought they, they, because sometimes they delete the whole story. You do, they do it. They have history. All right. And then it says, Allah allow Adam to marry his daughters to his sons. Because of the necessity of such a action, then also said that every delivery Adam was given a twin, a male and female, and he used to give the male of the one twin to the other twin in marriage. Habil's sister was not beautiful. <laughs> no, actually, it was across eyes, <laughs> according to the story. While Cabel's sister was so beautiful, hot. Resulting, Kabil went on her for himself. Instead of his brother, Adam refused unless they both sacrifice. And he who is sacrifice was accepted, which means by Allah, would marry Kabil's sister. <laughs> Habil's sacrifice was accepted. While Qabil sacrifice was rejected. And then he says, and that's what Allah told us about the accord. Ibn Abi Hatim recorded that Ibn Abbas said, during the time of Adam, the women would not allow to marriage for her male twin if, 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 if. but Adam was commanded to marry her to any of her other brothers <laughs> what other brothers in each appearance okay Adam was given twin male and female a beautiful daughter was once born for Adam and the other one was not beautiful so the twin brother of the ugly daughter said marry your sister to me and I will marry your sister to you he said no 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 for I have more right on to my sister so they both offered a sacrifice and the sacrifice the one who offered a sheep the sheep was accepted while the sacrifice of the other twin brother of a beautiful daughter which cons consisted some produced was not accepted any Muslim have a comment and actually it says clearly that the the, the one his sacrifice is not accepted because he offer uh, vegetables Allah is not Allah is not vegetarian
<clears throat> yeah. So if I want to get a beautiful girl, I will offer Allah a nice barbecue. I know now how to get. I know how to get to Allah through His stomach. Allah is not a veggie God. Is he? <clears throat> if we go to different interpretation, just to give you an, another example of this uh, madness cult. <clears throat> Five... 27 man the website of the king of jordan is working look he get look like he get paid by the america he's paying his bills so and recite o muhammad to them the people the story the tale of the two sons of adam abel and came truthfully by by the truth okay and then and then they sacrificed to god and abel case was a ram and cain he gave some green crops. Shame on you, Cain. You give God, you give Allah green crops. What's wrong with you? Huh? You want Allah to eat some carrot? I mean, look how cheap he is. He went to the field, he got some carrot and some... Uh, Zucchini and like he put them in the front uh, and the, you know and Allah he can eat him Allah he like barbecue yummy yummy <laughs> ribs uh, Give me tips from the ribs So Allah he took the ram Muslims why Allah he took the ram he did not take the vegetation Any know anyone knows And the funny the Muslim they say Christianity is a pagan cult believe in sacrifice blood sacrifice here we go your religion saying the first sacrifice ever happened by Allah uh, and Adam children's since Adam <clears throat> any Mohammedan all right we have, yeah. We, we we know because we are not going coming in a in a time where all the people will be awake or be with us. Today is Saturday night, so many people they go out, and me myself, I don't go party. Oh, what I need to do? The party come to me. I give Allah a sacrifice, and the party will come. <laughs> oh, what you need? Some ribs and some steaks. Yeah. What is that? What is this story? Where Muhammad he got this story from? And each time Eve she deliver a child, she deliver a twin. Are you sure? Why not four? And by the way, <clears throat> Muslims they believe too. Just to show you the contradiction. Let me see if I can find the hadith in English. Hold on. I don't think I will find it in English, but we will try. Uh, anyway, I will tell you what the hadith is saying because I'm not sure if I will find it in English. Uh, that according to Muhammad, Eve each time to she 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 carry a, a child, uh, she lose the child, and then Shaitan he told her, if you want to keep your child, you have to keep him. You have to name him by my name. So she named him Al Harith. And this is how he sacrificed. Where is this story? Let me try something else. Hold on.
Evet, evet. Mm-hmm. <coughs> All right, let's see this one. I, I don't like to, you know, to say something without showing it. So, no, no, no. And we can show it in Arabic, but um, I prefer to show it in English so people will see the madness. <coughs> okay. Let us try something else. Let us try this one. Here we go. Finally, we found it. I apologize, it took me some time, but eh. the Prophet said when Hawa, Hawa is Eve, Hawa, you see here the Arabic name for Eve is Hawa. Hawa. So, when Eve, each time she carry a child, a bliss come to her, and her children would not live after birth. So he said to Hawa, to Eve, call him Abdul Harith. Abdul Al Harith. Al Harith is the name of the Satan. So she named him Abdul Harith, and he lived. <laughs> hold on, hold on. So the first child of Eve, his name is Abdul Harith. So who are they, those uh, uh, Abel and Cain? Muhammad, Mr. Muhammad. Who is Abel and who is Cain? If the first child of Eve is Abdul Harith, son of Shaitan. Slave of Shaitan. <laughs> Anyone? I think we have enough for today. Did, did we give you a headache? Did you guys get headache? <laughs> Abdul Harith. True story, brother. Muhammad, he said things. And by the way, this hadith is da'if, brother. <laughs> Why? Because it's get Muhammad busted. You know? <laughs> well, my throat hurt, really. I'm not going to continue. But I wanted to share with you a good time in Saturday. And I know that already it's a Sunday in Indonesia. Uh, I hope you guys are having a good time and learning. And I pray that whatever we hear today is not for entertainment. I'm not doing what I do for entertainment. You see, I want every one of you will be an, you know, like a unresistible force of knowledge and faith to fight the devil and his lies. 
I want every one of you and I pray that all of you will do way better than me and you will know way better than what I know and that's why I share my knowledge so because you know knowledge is power and if we use it in the right way in the right direction it can be amazing power I wish I can stay and maybe talk for 24 hours there's a lot of things to share I mean it's endless I don't know I actually I shared nothing about Islam yet because most of the time we focus on things which is easier to prove a point like we want to show a Muslim that the Quran have contradictions you know what I mean so we focus on things which is easy and clear and they can't to play too much games with it but this is not really what we know about Islam there's a lot more I I did not even share one to what maybe a million of what I know about about this cult so this cult is very easy to defeat but you will not be able to do anything with it if you do not know what this cult is about it's the same as many you know problems we have today in our life you know our ignorance is our is our problem the Bible says my people have been destroyed because of their ignorance everything you do in your life is going to hurt you if you are ignorant you see even your divorce even your marriage even your investment if you do not know the to, like the right wise decision if you de if you make an ignorant decision it's going to be very costly people lose their life people lose their worth their health because of their ignorance mostly so ignorance is our enemy it's not the Muslims ignorance is our enemy both of us Muslims Christians Hindus everybody ignorance we got a guy he claimed to be a prophet and then by uh, through centuries nobody dare to question this man nobody there this is the this is the problem I mean even if somebody he don't believe in him he will not dare to open his mouth terrorism they terrify you so you will go mute like you see today in Iran in Iran people after more than 40 years they are in the street screaming because they are hungry when hunger strike they don't care for the God Allah no more they don't call for Khomeini and if they are really hungry this this revolution now is just started two days ago will never stop until they take all the mullahs we don't know what will happen next but this is the bend in the hunger why we want to wait until we are so hungry and dying to make a revolution revolution is start from now by learning educating ourselves so we will not suffer from hunger so we will not get a guy he put some stuff in his head and he tell us in the name of God in the name of Muhammad I order you we don't want somebody to replace Muhammad and to take advantage of our our money our life and our women as Muhammad was doing that happened in the past and that is happening today in the name of God somebody controlling you somebody taking your money your wealth somebody fooling you in the name of God somebody scaring you to make you go in the in direction which is not right God my friend he want to save you not to use you this is why Jesus said Sabbath was made for the man not the man was made for Sabbath correct the Jews they took the Word of God and they took the law which they received from their prophets and they try to make the law more important than the man itself the law was made for the man not the opposite God he do not need Sabbath he do not need your Sabbath he do not need your donation he do not need your ritual he do not need even your prayer it's you who need it so if the law lost the purpose which is the man when we say the man we mean human being the man and the woman so if the law lost the purpose and the law became holy 
and it's not the man who is important then that law is not from God no more you know what I mean so the Jew they are they start doing the same as Muhammad he is doing today they start worshiping law which made by Muhammad and it's not the man who is important no more when the law supposedly made for the man for the benefit of the man but Muhammad is a person who made the law for his benefit this is why in the Quran he says the fifth of the booty is for me the fifth from the attack for me the best of the booty is for me any woman she want to give herself to me because he is God so Islam from the beginning is made for the purpose of one man not the man one man his name is Muhammad so everybody praised this man even he changed his name from Qatham to Muhammad which means the praised one so Muhammad he replaced God by himself he made himself equal to God actually he made himself God on earth whatever Muhammad he say you obey the Quran say but Muhammad is a very bad person how we obey a bad person even the Quran confirmed that So, Muhammad, he want to you to call your son Abdul Harith, the slave of Satan. So it's up to you to choose to be Abdul Harith or the servant of the Messiah. Thank you very much for being here today with me. Don't forget to download the video and share it with your friends as soon as it is ready. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to our other channels if you like to join us when we are live on air because we are doing more live podcasts and the other channels. Today, just because of the weekend, I'm doing it here, but we will go back and do it in the other channel. So thank you. May the Lord bless you. The Lord is my provider with wisdom, courage, and knowledge, and even the bread I have in my table. I'm very thank thankful for my Lord, for he said, not only by bread the man he live. We live by the bread, yes, but not only by the bread. Those who live with the bread, they die with the bread. But those who live by the word of the Lord, they will never die. That's what the Messiah said. The one who drink from my water, he will never go thirsty. The one who listen to my words, he will never see death and the death he is talking about that you will be away from the mercy of the Lord and you will not be in his kingdom so we pray that the Lord will be with us save us from every evil and he will open the eyes of the Mohammedan so they can see the truth and the truth will set them free thank you very much for being here Christ is Lord Islam is false and see you soon.